Hey guys, what's going on? James here. And in this video today, we're going to be talking about, as you can see up here, how the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have signed some undrafted free agents to their team. If you look over here on the right-hand side of the video, you will see Greg Ahmed over at The Athletic had tweeted out that he had the Buccaneers signing nine so far to this point undrafted frees to the team. I'm sure there will be more, and if there are, I may make a community post tab about it. Who knows? But I thought it would be a fun idea, I do this every year, to go through some of these undrafted free agent guys and talk about um, just all of them and what they all could be potentially bringing to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because at the end of the day, you never know who is going to make an impact. I can't stress that enough. That has always been my philosophy for many years now uh, with the uh, just NFL in general. You never know who's going to make an impact. These guys can be no different. So, Let's go ahead and get started. By the way, uh, we do have this video set up back again. Uh, I actually figured out how to use my Sony camera as a webcam. So if you guys do like this, let me know down in the comments section below. But let's get started with the first guy that is on our list right now, and that is Florida A&M offensive tackle Calvin Ashley, who comes in right now at six foot six, three hundred and 10 pounds again from Florida A&M and this is going to be interesting you know Calvin Ashley he's a big dude right he's got good size for a uh, NFL offensive lineman you figure that depending on if he wants to play on the left side or the right side of that offensive line he'll be competing with either uh I honestly don't know. Maybe he'd be competing with Robert Hainsey for that backup right tackle spot. Maybe he'd be competing for Josh Wells with that backup left tackle spot. We'll have to wait and see for that, but overall, Calvin Ashley, he's a big dude. I think he's got pretty decent ability for an NFL offensive lineman, or at least I think he has decent potential uh, ability as an NFL offensive lineman. I'm going to be very excited to see what he can do in some of these rookie mini camps and uh, beyond with the overall size and uh, hopefully good ability that he may have. So Calvin Ashley, offensive tackle out of Florida A&M, is the first guy. Moving on to the next guy, we have Navy defensive back Cameron Kinley, which again, he has very good size as well. Six foot two, 204 pounds. He is coming out of Navy and you know, this is another guy, much like the Chris Wilcox pick in the seventh round, who's a very good fit for a Todd Bowles defense. He's got the size, right? Six foot two, a little over 200 pounds, big, strong, physical corner. Much like what I said with the Chris Wilcox pick, you know, Cameron Kinley here, he may have to make his name in special teams off the bat, you know, and there's going to be some very stiff competition for that special teams play. But I'm very excited to see what Cameron Kinley can do. Uh, I was very interested in him coming into the NFL draft as a late round guy, obviously. But, you know, he's got good size. I think he can be a good fit, not just in a Todd Bulls defense, but really any defense that uses, you know, big, strong, physical, man-to-man -man corners in the NFL. I think that he can be a solid fit in any one of those defenses. Uh, and overall, I think he could be a very capable backup. So Cameron Kinley, cornerback out of Navy, is another uh, under drafted free agent that was signed. Moving on to the third guy on our list, and this one was interesting, and I'm probably going to butcher his name, but it is Miami kicker Jose Borregales? Borregales? Jose Borregales, maybe? Um, but anyway, this guy is a kicker out of Miami, and what was so interesting to me for this is he didn't always play at Miami. I can't remember off the top of my head what other school he played at. Maybe it was FIU. In fact, it might have been FIU, but I do want to say that Jose Borregales, uh, you know, this guy did not get over 80% in terms of a uh, field goal completion percentage until his senior year as a kicker. After that, I believe he had 72% junior year, maybe 75% sophomore year, and then I think he had 83% his freshman year. So it was very interesting that I saw that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers brought this guy in as a kicker for competition for Ryan Suckup. Uh, that's a lot banking on that senior season. But regardless, you know, hey, that showed signs of improvement. That showed signs of of growth as a kicker. So Jose Borregales, maybe he can transition very well into the NFL, depending on how his rookie season went, where he hit 90%. You know, and there even was some interest from teams during the NFL draft process and potentially taking him in the later rounds as a kicker. So I'm going to be, be uh, very intrigued to see how Jose does here as competition for Ryan Suckup. It's a very big uphill climb, right? An uphill battle considering Ryan Suckup had a very solid year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as a kicker, but you never know. Uh, you know, maybe some of the uh, things that he does for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and rookie minicamp, training camp, and whatnot as well could potentially land him a job or even a practice squad opportunity in the future. Especially, you know, that team could potentially be the Tampa Bay Buccaneers if they keep all of the practice squad rules 
in place from last season. So Jose Borregales, kicker out of Miami, is another undrafted uh, player signed by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Moving on to the next one, we have Iowa State safety Lawrence White, who right now is six feet tall, 197 pounds. He's probably going to be competing with Grant Stewart for some backup safety time, potentially. I know they, they might move Grant Stewart around a lot, both at linebacker and safety, so that honestly might be a point of benefit here um, for Lawrence White. And I'm going to be very intrigued to see how he does um, on special teams as a backup guy, maybe in the preseason as well. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have honestly had a pretty decent track record of bringing in some undrafted free agent safeties specifically, and them doing uh, you know pretty well in recent years in training camp and in preseason and whatnot. So maybe Lawrence Guy can be the next guy in that list of guys who does some pretty good work. So I'm going to be very interested to see how Lawrence White does as a backup and continues to grow and develop. Again, could be another undrafted uh, free agent guy who might end up on the practice squad, or who knows, maybe he can even end up on the regular season roster as a special teamer if he flourishes in that role. So, Lawrence White, safety, is who another Tampa Bay Buccaneers undrafted free agent. Moving on to the next guy, we have Cincinnati defensive lineman Elijah Ponder, who right now, as it stands, comes in at 6'3", 275 pounds, so he's got some pretty decent size for a lineman for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. Um, you know, maybe you would want him a little bit bigger if he's trying to be a run stuffer, but Elijah Ponder, I mean, I, I like this guy. You know, there was a little bit of buzz about him potentially being a sleeper going into this draft as a, a pass rusher, a little bit as a run stuffer. I'm going to be very interested to see how he does. Maybe we could see him, you know, move around a lot. Maybe he moves inside. Maybe he moves a defensive end. Who knows? But overall, I think Elijah Ponder can be a solid pass rushing rotational guy. Uh, in the preseason, in the camps and whatnot. And yeah, let's see how he does. So Elijah Ponder, defensive lineman out of, uh, what was it, Cincinnati. So moving on to FAU outside linebacker Leighton McCarthy. And this one is a very interesting signing, right? Leighton McCarthy, there was a lot, or not a lot, but there was a good bit of people who had Leighton McCarthy as a sleeper edge rusher going into this draft, and he signs with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers out of FAU, Florida Atlantic University, 6'2", 226 pounds, so a little bit undersized unless he has added some weight, and I just didn't uh, find it in my research, but you know, I'm still going to be very intrigued to see how he does. You know, maybe playing inside, maybe playing a little bit of outside edge rusher, we don't know. If we look back at the Greg Allman tweet here, he has him listed as an outside linebacker. So we'll see how he transitions into a Todd Bulls defense. But a lot of people feel that he can be an effective pass rusher, which has me very interested. You know, if he's playing inside in Todd Bulls defense, he may be a blitzing middle linebacker. Uh, if he, you know, bulks up, adds a little bit of weight, he can be an outside edge rusher. Let's, let's see what he does. You know, so I'm going to be very intrigued in this one, um, you know, how he grows, how he develops, how he is used also primarily. So, um, yeah, overall there we have Leighton McCarthy, outside linebacker out of FAU, maybe inside linebacker in a Todd Bulls defense. The next player that we have is South Carolina guard Sedarius Hutchinson, and this man is coming in at six foot four, 320 pounds. Uh, in terms of height, you know, it's kind of right around where you want it to be at a guard, and then in terms of weight, he's a big man for a guard. And I like that a lot. I like having big, bulky offensive linemen, and Sedarius Hutchinson is no different. Much like what I just talked about, though, um, with Calvin Ashley earlier, this may be a little bit of a difficult climb for Sedarius Hutchinson, considering, you know, he's going to be going up against Aaron Stinney, Alex Kappa, Robert Hainsey, who has just signed, uh, John Mulshawn, who has been, you know, getting a lot of love here over at the Mr. Bucks Nation channel, as well as some other guys as well. So there's going to be a lot of stiff competition. We'll see how Sedarius does. He's got the size, in my opinion, to be an NFL offensive lineman. Now let's see how he can transition from college into the NFL. Moving on to the next player, guys. This is uh, Stony Brook safety, Augie Contresa. And, uh, you know, this is going to be interesting. Again, he is going to be competing with guys um, like, you know, like Mike Edwards for that backup safety job. He's also going to be competing um, with potentially Cameron, McK uh, Cameron Kinley, potentially Lawrence White as well. There's going to be some very interesting competition in that special teams department. Chris Wilcox as well, cornerback out of BYU. There is, you know, a lot of guys there who can do very similar things in terms of being sure tacklers and special teams play. So I'm going to be very interested to see how Augie Contresa does. 
Um, again, very solid tackler at Stony Brook. You know, coming from a pretty decently small school or, you know, uh, you know not a big name school, right? So I definitely think that this kid has a high motor. He, he has a very solid ability as a safety. Um, it's just going to be a very uphill climb in terms of special teams play and potentially being a backup safety as well. But I have confidence that he will do a very good job. So Augie Contresa is another undrafted free agent signing. And then finally, guys, the last one here is West Virginia wide receiver TJ Simmons, who comes in at 6'2", 198 pounds, a little bit bigger of a wide receiver. And uh, this one's going to be, you know, very interesting to see how TJ Simmons does. I think he's got good hands, good route running ability. Size overall is very good as well. But there are so many stinking guys in that wide receiver room. I mean, uh, you would assume that TJ Simmons is probably the eighth or ninth wide receiver right now. So he might have a harder uphill climb than really any of these guys, considering all of the guys who are, say, the first six wide receivers right now are all draft picks, um, or at least a high-tier free agent signing. And then after that, you have a couple of guys who can do some very good things as well. TJ Simmons is going to have a lot of work to do. But again, he's a guy where I feel if the Tampa Bay Buccaneers could maybe stash him on a practice squad, uh, really go ahead and keep him hidden and develop him, that would be awesome. But I also wouldn't be surprised if TJ Simmons, if he doesn't land an opportunity here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, could get opportunities elsewhere because the kid really is talented, in my opinion. But overall, guys, that is it for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers undrafted free agent signings. Which ones are your favorite? If I had to go ahead and give mine, I would say FAU linebacker uh, Leighton, uh, Leighton, Leighton uh, McCarthy there out of FAU. And then also West Virginia wide receiver TJ Simmons are two guys I'm really looking forward to. But I'm also intrigued by every single guy on this list. Because again, you never know who's going to make an impact in the NFL. And these guys are no different. Some of these guys could have phenomenal camps uh, and just phenomenal chances. And they take the ball and literally run with it. And they could be high, you know, opportunity, you know, players for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going into these camps, going into preseason, and maybe they carve out a role for themselves in the regular season as special teams guys or even backups as well. You never know. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Let me know what you think about the undrafted free agent signings, and I will see you all in the next video or the next live stream. But until then, and as always, guys, goodbye for now, and go Bucks.